Good afternoon. I'm Ann Dahlke, and I'm a former Athena Leadership Award winner from the Wasa Region Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here this afternoon with Dr. Swathi Biswas at the Marshfield Clinic. And Dr. Biswas is a finalist for this year's Athena Leadership Award. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about what being nominated means to you. Um, it was a surprise, a very pleasant surprise. Um, it's a great honor. It's a great honor. I had actually never really considered myself a, a leader. Um, so it's always a surprise when other people consider me a leader. Um, I think I had very outdated or traditional uh, views of what a leader was. Uh, somebody maybe who was very uh, authoritative author uh, or very paternalistic and you know thinking of what they knew best what what other people should do and things like that so um, I never fit into that mode of leadership and so uh, but I know that the views of leaders have changed and I, I do consider myself a leader but a different kind of a leader more of a servant leader uh, so yes, it was, um, yes, to answer your question in short, it was a great honor. That's wonderful. Well, somebody certainly saw these qualities in you. So tell us a little bit more about your background and, and what it is that you do here at Marshfield Clinic. Yes, um, I'm a physician. Um, I, uh, my specialty is called physical medicine and rehabilitation. Um, so my, uh, my job actually involves uh, seeing people who have had some kind of an injury or disability and trying to help them uh, reach their maximal uh, potential in terms of their function, in terms of their ability to enjoy life. So my specialty is, uh, is essentially helping people lead their best lives. And it um, it's, it's spoke a lot to me and that's how I, I actually eventually ended up in this specialty after having tried a couple of other ones. Okay. So I started in psychiatry and uh, and nothing wrong with any of those. They just weren't the, the right match for me. So I started in psychiatry, then I did neurology, which I still loved a lot and I still really enjoy it. But this was what really spoke to me. It's nice that you found that, that uh, um, specialty that really spoke to your heart and, yes. and, and captured your passion. Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, can you tell us about a time when you advocated fiercely either for yourself or for another person or a cause? Well, recently, uh, recently I advocated for myself. Um, I have actually worked as a clinician for many years. I've been with the Marshall Clinic for 23 years. Uh, but recently an opportunity came up uh, where um, I have become more of an administrator. I, I'm more of an administrator, in, in more of an administrative role. So right now I'm working part-time, half-time as a clinician, okay. which I love to do. I love to help patients. But another part of my job is uh, as a neurosciences service line medical director. So I am um, helping uh, other providers in the field of neurology, rehab medicine, neuropsychology, pain management, and neurosurgery, um, helping them to have the most successful practice or helping them to um, have the best work-life balance or I, I guess helping sure. them to be the, at their maximal potential. And so I'm, I'm serving the clinic in a different role. Uh, as an administrator, and this is a very challenging time for healthcare organizations. Um, I felt that I was in a good place to be able to contribute to uh, the Marshall Clinic, which has been a wonderful employer to me, and that's why I, I advocated for myself, and I said, I think I can do this. Good for you. And then, can you share an example of a time when you feel you've acted courageously? Um, okay, to, to do that, I will take you back 30 years, sure. and I will take you very far away to uh, India. That is the country of my birth. Um, so growing up in a very middle class Indian family, um, we had certain uh, expectations, and one of those expectations was that you unquestionably uh, followed your parents' 
directions mm -hmm. and advice and everything. And one of those things actually was marriage. So uh, you might have heard this, but in India, you know, arranged marriages uh, used to be very, very common uh, or kind of the norm. Mm -hmm. um, even the time that I was growing up, uh, it was felt that your parents who uh, had your best interest at heart and who loved you unconditionally, they would never make the wrong choice for you. And so, uh, you know, they, would, they were the right people to choose your spouse. Um, but something, something in me always um, bucked that, you know, notion. And uh, I felt that maybe that was not the way I wanted to go. You know, there were some other practices in India related to marriage that were very unappealing to me. One of them was dowry, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially the, well, traditionally the, the girl's father or the girl's family had to pay a sum of money to the boy's family supposedly as a gift, but more or less as a condition for sure. marriage. And I had always been very outspoken about that, that I did not want to marry a, you know, into a family where that was going to be expected. I did not want to marry into a family where the girls would not be allowed to work or the husband decided if she could go outside the house. And you know, all those kind of traditions, they scared me because I had been brought up with a lot of freedom to choose my career path. Um, so when when uh, my husband um now my my husband now um, asked me out uh, i did i went out with him but very hesitantly and very nervously because i did not know how it would go um, and i felt very guilty because i felt that i was doing something wrong but um i I felt that there was that kinship, you know, I felt that there was respect. I felt that there was some, this was somebody who would um, take care of me, who would honor me, who would respect me. And so I really wanted marriage with this person. Uh, but I had to stand up to my parents. And before I could do that, before I could say anything to them, I had to pin him down. So I said, on our second date, I said, uh, how much do you like me? <laughs> you know, how much do you really like me? And he, he said, he would marry me. Wow. on our second date he we knew of each other we had worked with each other in the hospital so okay. uh, but it was a it was a uh, uh, I think it was a courageous move <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree that was a, a very <laughs> courageous move to sort of rebel against those long-standing family and, and cultural traditions so yes and then when I went to my parents and I said you know I respectfully ask your permission to marry this person he because he wants to marry me and at that time, marrying him meant going against um, a, a long-standing tradition in our family, extended, in our extended family. Nobody had, had actually chosen a partner for themselves. It meant leaving my country and coming here because that was his plan. Okay. You know? So imagine the weight of all of that on a 22-year-old. It's very courageous. Yeah. Well, good for you. Now, worked out really well. We <laughs> celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary last year. Well, congratulations. So now I'm going to ask you to share a time um, when you brought another woman into a leadership position, either on a project or on a cause, and tell us a little bit about what you learned from that experience. Sure. Um, so I, I want to um, highlight uh, an organization that I'm involved in and very proud of. It's called the Indian Society of Central Wisconsin. It started out as a very small group of us, uh, six of us, two are not even here in the city anymore. But um, we wanted to uh, preserve our Indian culture for our children and start to share that with our friends and family here. So it started out as a very small organization and um, I feel that I, I strongly believe in the collective power of women. So from an organization with had, which had two women and two men, it has now grown to an organization that has six women and, um, and our board, you know, our board basically mm -hmm. has six women. And we've been very mindful, I've been very mindful of picking people who have different strengths, somebody who is uh, extremely good with money, you know, she's our treasurer, somebody who's extremely good with, uh, you know, the social media stuff, you know, she, sure. she does that. 
very art, some, somebody is very artistic, somebody is very organized. So we have all of these women working together uh, for this volunteer run nonprofit called the Indian Society of Central Wisconsin, and we all have the same goal, which is to uh, promote our culture and share it, share the beautiful culture with the people of Central Wisconsin. Uh, so I think that that's, I, as the vice president, I feel that it's my biggest contribution or my biggest honor that to have been able to involve these women in this organization and to work with me and for me to work with them. It's wonderful that you were able to build that from scratch and to recognize those strengths in your board members and, and pull them into the organization and, and grow it that way. Yes. I love that. So um, tell us a little bit of, um, of different ways that you serve the community. I know that you're involved in some other organizations as well, uh, United Way, uh, The Neighbor's Place. Tell us a little bit about what you do for those organizations. Sure. Um, so I, I feel that um, after I had lived in Wausau, Wisconsin and had gotten to love this place, I really felt the desire to give back to the community. Um, um, so several years ago, I got involved with United Way. Uh, I started out as a, uh, well, I've, we've been donors from the very beginning. Sure. My husband and I, we've donated ever since we, we, we moved here because we feel it's just the right thing to do. Right? But just monetary donations and I did not feel enough for me, so I got involved and became a board member for United Way. Pretty soon I became, uh, I'm on the executive committee. And then because, as I said to you before, I really love working with women and for women, so I joined Women United mm -hmm. and uh, quickly got involved with the Women United Council and then the special events committee and then was chair of the committee. Um, and so what, what I love to do is figure out some unique and creative ways of fundraising for Women United okay. so that we can, you know, do, do cool things, you know, buy uh, winter wear for the children, you know, who need it, and uh, uh, scholarships for young women who deserve to go to school. Nice. So uh, we were involved, I was involved in a mentoring program with the Boys and Girls uh, Club where we mentored with uh, young women hopefully to guide them towards uh, you know, higher education, going to college and things like that. So different ways of doing it. And then as you mentioned, um, through the United Way of Volunteer Connection, I've done so many things, you know, make a difference day or raking leaves for the neighbors, uh, serving food at the neighbor's place, you know, the, um, the warming shelter. Okay. So the warming shelter, you know, serving meals over there. I can't even think of all the different <laughs> things. Turkey trot. I mean, anything that they ask me to get involved with or anything that the United Way is doing, um, I, if I can't, I jump in there and I try to help out. Well, you certainly have a love for your community and, and your passion for people and medicine um, and your compassion as well are very uh, much recognized in the community. So thank you for all of that. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to share with folks today? No, I, no? I, I'm happy to, um, I, I do want to, I do want to share that I think Wasa is a wonderful place to live in. Uh, I feel very fortunate and blessed to have lived here. Actually, this is the longest that I've lived in any one place Wonderful. in Wausau, Wisconsin. And so um, I, I, I feel that I'm a very strong advocate for people to move to central Wisconsin. And I try to do that, you know, when we, part of my job is recruiting physicians sure. and uh, people to come and work for the Marshall Clinic. And I'm a very uh, strong steward of that. Wonderful. Congratulations again on your nomination, and I look forward to seeing you at the awards luncheon. I'm looking forward to it, too. Thank you uh, both, Swathi and Anne, for this uh, interview. This is the last interview for this week. We'll have one more on Monday. Uh, so please uh, keep an eye on the, the Chamber's Facebook page for that interview on Monday afternoon. 
The actual Athena Award will be held on Wednesday, November 9th. It's a lunchtime program, uh, which will be held downtown at the uh, Jefferson Street Event Center. If you have questions about the event or want to learn more about it or maybe register for the event, please visit wasachamber.com. This is Brian Otten. I'm the marketing director for the Chamber, wishing everyone a, a great weekend. And again, thank you uh, to all of our finalists for participating in the interviews this week.